Hey guys, how's it going? This is Craig Connolly here. Welcome back to my studio and welcome back to my vlogs. So a little while back when I was on tour, I was regularly making these vlog videos for you guys, showing you a little bit of an insight into my life uh, on tour as I travel, as I make music and whatnot. Unfortunately, they got cut short because of course the whole of Clubland has shut down, but I'm gonna be bringing them back and talking about all the things that's been going on in my life since this lockdown happened and what's coming up in the future as well. Uh, so of course I released that album in May and also have the amazing news that I'm going to become a father so we have a lot to talk about just with those two things alone uh, plus I'm going to show you guys an insight into how I do the screen screening uh, there's going to be a lot of talk about how I made all the recent music which I've been releasing uh, the different music videos we've had and of course what's coming up in the future as well as we get back on the road so yeah I'm glad to be back on the vlogs I'm glad to be showing you guys uh, a little bit about my life once again so this particular vlog uh, as the title suggested is all about the track all for love which was just released with siskin and it features on my album a sharper edge which is right there available right now from all good streaming and download portals a little cheeky promotion there so yeah i'm going to be talking about this track in particular today and i actually have an interview with siskin uh with the guys themselves and we're going to be going back and forth talking about the production process talking about how they wrote the uh the lyrics and helped contribute with the music and production as well and uh, i'm going to show you guys of course um two or three different stages of the production from the initial ideas on the uh, computer screen with like just like scraps of like you know chords melodies how they evolve into what you hear today and then i'm going to take you into the guys into the finish um finish, finished full session of all for love with all the finished parts all the different synths drums and, and, and you know and talk about how that evolves into that finished piece of music and also show you a little bit about the uh, music video so lots to talk about uh let's get stuck right in this is an interview with Siskin. Let's check it out. Okay, you're here with me, Craig Connolly, and I have got on this video call uh, Siskin, which is Suzanne Chesterton and Sue McLaren. And we're going to talk a little bit about our track, <laughs> All for Love, uh, which is one of my favorites uh, I've ever made, actually. And, you know, really good to make it with you guys. And we're going to give the fans a little bit of an insight into how we did it. Um, so, I'm gonna hit you with, with the first question, because uh, you guys together are a relatively new act, so who exactly is Siskin, and what was the inspiration for creating your group? Me and Sue met, actually, at Gatecrasher a couple of years ago, but um, I've been working with Paul Van Dyke uh, on his radio show now for about four or five years, so I'm very familiar with Sue's work, uh, because a lot of the stuff that Paul does is on the albums and stuff is he, he likes to work with sue mclaren so i met her at gatecrasher um a couple of years back and it was just so lovely to put a face to the name and uh, i was telling her all the stuff that we've been doing on paul van dyke's radio show and you know including all her tracks and everything and that night i'd actually got one of my own tracks it was the first track that i ever released um called antus with richard lowe and solar stone was going to play it at gatecrasher that night so he went off to, to play it and I played the track to Sue and said, wow, Sue, listen to this. This is my track. I can't believe I'm finally going to have it played in a nightclub. And Sue listened to it and started singing along to it of something completely that I'd never thought of as, as a melody and uh, a song to my track. And I was just absolutely blown away. So we, we agreed to keep in touch um, and we did. So we kept in touch. And then uh, about a couple of months later, I had a, a phone call with Sue and she suggested getting together to to kind of form a group using like my production skills, uh, her brilliant vocal ideas. Uh, she was getting right into the production side as well. And so she wanted to come across and we've we've basically spent so much time in the studio between us both learning different skills and and, and we just work really, really well together. Um, do you want to fill in Sue? Anything that I missed out? Oh, I think you're doing really well there. Uh, well, yeah, exactly that. I think I just kind of really, I've been writing so many top lines for lots of different artists and things like that. And I just kind of, I'd done production years ago and not this kind of music. And I just really want to get back into it. And I think I was just mindful there were very few women uh, producers that were like in the scene. And I, and I guess we talked about that a little bit, thinking it'd be good to be a little bit more visible as women 
who are producing and writing and maybe that might encourage more uh, younger you know women or older women or whatever into the scene just to kind of have a little bit more maybe uh, visibility I guess in that sense um, yeah, yeah and I, I see a lot of it you know we see a lot of vocalists um, as females in in the scene but you don't see many uh, as the original artists in the scene as well so it's good that this, this kind of group combines the both, you know, you both of you brings your own kind of thing to the table and it's like, uh, it's all a female group, isn't it? Rather than it's like a DJ with yeah. a collaboration or whatever. Yeah. And I guess, you know, I've, 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 I've met so many uh, vocalist songwriters because they're, you know, a lot, some vocalists are songwriters, some vocalists uh, sing other people's songs and I've just met so many people over the years. And, and I guess maybe I've also seen them get a little bit, I don't know a little bit jaded or a little bit of sense that there's not necessarily um a way in for them you know a way in for them to get the live shows a way in for them to progress with their careers and so i guess we we're just looking to try and find new ways to feel more included in the, yeah. in the scene yes um and just to really enjoy the music of course of course you know? yeah yeah and i and i like the idea as well and i like um like, like this, this collaboration really did feel like a whole joint effort between the three of us. Because, like you know, sometimes the way I've worked in the past is I send a demo to a vocalist and they're out on the top of it. Um, but then this occasion, I sent like really just a really it was really just rough cards, wasn't it? I mean, there wasn't yeah. any production yeah. there. I was really happy when I got back a slight variation of that. So it wasn't just a cause I yeah. sent. And then we got melodies from you guys as well. And I thought, oh, well, I, I now have like a, an idea for a main melody from yeah. the notes that you sent. So on All For Love, the main arpeggiator is yeah. literally taken from a line which you guys wrote, isn't it? Yeah, uh, yeah. I just, yeah. I made it into that, like, you know, Craig Connolly style, kind of subculture-esque yeah. 16th note melody. Um, so yeah, that, that was actually my second question, but, um, when I sent you the rough demo, like what was your experience of it? Like, where did you go first in your ideas between the two of you? Well, um, so, so I, I remember seeing you at Creamfields and you'd sent over the MIDI to Sue and, um, I, I, I promised you, I mean, me and Sue have been really busy at that point and I was like, right, I promise you, Craig, I'm going to get something over to you within the next week or so. So when I got back, it was the next day. So I got the, um, the MIDI out. Um, and I, and it, it was going, it was looping round and round and I thought, you know what, I'm going to try and play it out. So I got my piano, which is in front of me. You can't see it now, but it's just yeah, at the I've back. I've got of one here as well. It's, it's like Mine. there. <laughs> I've got a keyboard here too. So anyway, so I started um, just playing it on the piano and I, I closed my eyes and I, what I tend to do with, with stuff is just see where it takes me and I just, just play. Um, so I got the chords and, and I was just play, playing and having a mess around with them and then all of a sudden it turned from a four bar loop into like a, an eight bar to a 16 bar and I just played it in. I was like, that's amazing. So I just <laughs> put, put, put it in, plugged in, plugged in my, uh, my middle leads, recorded it in and then I put some strings behind it and, and a little, um, little arpeggiators and stuff like that just brought it to life. It took, it took me about best part of half a day, I think. And then I just sent it over to Sue and crossed my fingers that she'd like it. And I'm like, what did you think, you think of this to Craig? And within an hour, she got back and she's singing over the top of it. And it was literally there. I nearly cried. It was, it was just amazing. She just, yeah. just knows what to do with it. Um, and then we, after she'd done that, we then worked on the production a bit, sent it over to you and crossed our fingers again that you'd really like it, and you did. Yes. So, <laughs> yeah, exactly. It Go happened on, so quickly. I was going to say, it just really happened yeah. that naturally and that quickly. I think yeah. once it expanded from the four bars and it just had a bit of a life of its own, and literally that vocal just, the whole thing just came out in a one in about half an hour. And I always find myself, if something falls out really quickly like that, it's generally a good thing. If I'm spending too long and nothing's coming, then sometimes, I don't know, it just, just doesn't seem to flow as well. That's so um, true. Like the, the tracks that I've had the most success with are the ones which I've not like, not tried hard, but when I've, when I've been writing it in the writing stage where they haven't been forced. So like just an idea that I had when I wasn't trying to write a track. Um, and I think we write, when I wrote this album, like there was, I wrote so much music to begin with that none of them had a vocal or an idea or a production or a sound it was just music it's just like you know 20 chord sequences or whatever and the best yeah. ones are always ones where i just sit down at it and i'm just plonking along and something really organic comes out um exactly. 
and I remember where, like, it's funny you said that because when you sent that that collection of you, you know Suzanne's chords and melodies and Sue's vocals over to me, I immediately knew I was like, this is a hit. Like, this is huge. Like this is massive. <laughs> and it was a bit right at the end of the demo where um, Sue starts singing the awful love line. I was like, that's it. That's all you need. That is literally it. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. I could hear it in my head from there. I was like, Brilliant. this is gonna be massive. So yeah. Uh, I've, I was... got goosebumps. I've got goosebumps yeah. now, I'm just thinking about all of that, oh, how it all yeah. came together. It was, yeah. And yeah, when you was... sent it back, oh my god, yeah. when you put that intro on, yeah. oh my, I was like, that is just heavenly, it was just yeah. absolutely beautiful. I think um, just before I started this process, I bought some new software. I mean, over, over the last year since I moved in here, I bought all kinds of things, like a mixer, like didn't really need, like more synthesizers, a brand new iMac. But I bought, you know, Omnisphere, uh, yeah, yeah. Sonics. Uh, so all those layers are from that, um, the different, like, I think I go into the psychoacoustic section. It's all stuff which is like, it's like someone would like hit a piano with a hammer and then tune that nice. and make a different soundscape out of it. And there was actually, um, I'm quite like into sci-fi movies. And one of them is uh, the sound. And this, is, and this isn't like an illegal sample. This is a sample that you can download for free. Someone's uploaded sounds from NASA uh, that they've released as a free sound yeah. library. And it's something like the sound... <laughs> It's the sound of Jupiter, uh, the, the sound <laughs> that the radiation from Jupiter or something. It's on YouTube, so I just, I just ripped it off YouTube. I mean, it's, it was really? licensed-free, so there you go. It's I like it. Wow. <laughs> there we go. Um, so but yeah, the, awesome. So the, the track's out there in the uh, whole universe now. It is, yeah, it is. It suits the, uh, the kind of theme of the album, and the, you know, that's, that's what I'm into. And so yeah, yeah, the like final it. production was good. Um, no, it came together really, really exciting. Music. Good stuff. Um, so yeah, I mean, okay, I guess we wanted to ask you soon, both of you, about the lyrics. Like, what do you, what, um, what are the lyrics about? Like, do they resonate with you about a particular things that's happened in your life? Or, well, you know, that's a funny one. Sometimes I really set on a theme, and sometimes I just sing whatever comes out of my mouth. And on this occasion, it was just literally what a lot of it just kind of fell out as I was looking for a melody. So the chorus kind of in the pre-chorus just kind of literally just came out and I just spent a bit more time on thinking about, about how the verse kind of would fit with that. Yeah. And I guess it was just about the universality of, you know, love often doesn't run smoothly, that it's almost like going with the tough times as well as when it's good and just being all in. I guess it's about, you know, just being with it. And if something comes at you, just stick together and kind of get through it. It was that kind of sentiment, really. Yeah. Uh, and then kind of finding some words that weren't, I don't know, I'm a bit funny with words. That, like I, I like them to have meaning, but I don't like them to be also not too throwaway. That are just kind of the same things that come around again. And I guess I always look that for uh, lyrics myself in songs or often so it can draw me in. But if the lyrics are too throwaway, then it kind of puts me off. So I kind of felt it had to have sufficient kind of meaning um, yeah. to, to fit the the track i guess yeah yeah i love the lyrics as well you know and, and you're definitely right like if anyone's in a, a relationship you know relationships don't run smoothly but if you give it your all you know you can have something really rewarding at the end of it so yeah i can totally get that and i think the fans resonate with that as well um yeah. well you know definitely um i wanted to ask you guys like what was your first memories of trance music like what was the first trance record either of you ever heard bought on, on record on vinyl or cd or tape or anything or or anything like you know what was the first track where you thought oh my god this music's amazing well when i was younger so my dad it was a big um vangelis um jean-michel jarre fan and he had like loads and loads of records and we used to listen to them all the time and record them onto tape he had this cd collection as well called synthesizers and it had things like popcorn music on and and oh uh, gosh it was it was brilliant so i i was brought up with that i also really liked um metallica heavy metal music um i was a massive massive music fan i used to play the guitar I used to play piano so i was all growing up kind of just in everything and then i think it was about 1996 and i heard the first trans song that i ever heard was cafe del mar yeah um and it just, it was so good. So I was listening to it on some kind of compilation. You know, we used to go in and buy them from HMV and used to come home with a CD and not really know what every track was, but you kind of knew like little ones. It, it was a bit like that. So I, I put it in the CD player and I remember 
uh, taping it to tape there and then because I wanted to run across to my friend's house and just play him this incredible track that I'd just heard. And it was just like combining everything that I'd ever loved. And then after that, I, I remember um, it was the Euphoria compilations. Can you, refer can you remember the Euphoria ones, Craig? Yeah, I had many. Yeah, I had, um, I'll come back, I'll come to my memory in a minute. But it's pretty <laughs> thing. It's um, yeah. 1998, my yeah. first girlfriend listening to Breakdown Euphoria in a bedroom. And yeah. it, like Insomnia, Café Del Mar, yeah. Saltwater by Chicane. Yeah, yeah, you I used to that. love it. Oh, used to absolutely love it. So yeah, Euphoria collections. I think it was mixed, but it was the green one. It was the first one that came out, and it had binary finery on it, and um, it had a uh, Paul Van Dyke for an angel on it, and various yeah. other ones. And it was I, I was going to university that that year, and I got this little Fiesta, and it was like the soundtrack to my life. So I, I'd plug in the tape, you get to the end, I'd turn it round again, and literally that's all I did. Just turn them tapes around and listen to them to university because I, I, I was in Chester at the time and then back to my mum and dad's and yeah that was, was like literally the soundtrack to my life and then I discovered Gatecrasher and then the rest is history. <laughs> Good, by yourself Sue? Wow I've not um I've not actually thought about this um I was really late to trance you know and I probably didn't even because I've always written songs I've always kind of done uh, maybe more folky or left field I used to like a lot of trip hop and that kind of stuff yeah, um, yeah, that left field, you know, um, rafterism, stuff like that. Yeah, so that was kind of more my kind of thing. And I think I kind of fell into it. I probably didn't even know what trance was. I wouldn't have been able to identify it as a genre. I what think was your was, first trash, trance release, see? So, I think it was 2010. Um, I was doing some um, session vocals. I'd, I'd like, um, I put myself online on a Sound on Sound magazine. I used to yeah. get that all the time. Yeah. Uh, and I just kind of offered my services to do like um, top lines or session vocals for people. And I ended up doing someone uh, a track for someone, and um, and then they said, you know, Sue, your voice would suit trance really well. And I was like, really? That <laughs> and then before I knew it, I was like doing a track with Ali and Fila uh, yeah. back in 2009-10, and I was like absolutely hooked. I don't know, I just kind of, I don't know if I'd never, so trans kind of found me rather than me finding trans. Yeah. Yeah. You know, uh, I just have never looked back. I just, I don't think I'd realised how just, I don't know, just how good it makes you feel. And I just think that feeling connected when, especially when you're in a club or something like that. My brother, who's like a lot younger, loved this stuff, you know. <laughs> I used to think, oh my God, what's he listening to? You know, because I'd be like listening to uh, Radiohead or something like that, you know, really grungy, yeah. depressing stuff. <laughs> Um, all of a sudden, I'm like, oh my god, why did I not feel this or hear this? I'm glad it did find you because you're, you're like one of my favorite vocalists, and um, I can't remember which one was the first one I started playing. I played Lights like, still today, so oh, and, um, nice. yeah, so yeah, we've done two now, and now the second one obviously exactly, with Suzanne, yeah. Susan just is on board as well. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for your time, oh, and, it's um, so yeah, it's been great to talk to you about Awful Love. <laughs> oh, you're very welcome, and uh, congrats on the album again. Cheers, nice one. Congrats. No congrats. Okay. All see right, you guys. Soon. See you Bye. soon. Bye. 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 So there we have it. That was a little interview with Suzanne Chesterton and Sue McLaren, two really great artists uh, that I've admired over the years. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to jump now into a little bit of a screen grab section where I'll be showing you guys the uh, ideas and how they come about step by step onto the finished product. Here we go. Okay, this was the first idea that I sent to Siskin. It was basically just this loop of uh, 16 bars uh, of this kind of plucky melody. So that was it, it was pretty simple. Um, often when I'm working with a vocalist, I'll send them more of a, like, more of a filled out demo, but since I knew that uh, she was, Suze, Sue was working with Suzanne Chesterton as well, I just felt like I should just leave it open to their interpretation and see uh, which way 
it comes back and it came back uh, like this. So this little WAV sample we're looking at here is um, what they worked on sent back to me. Uh, and it's from here that we end up with the original chords. So this was a fascinating combination where I sent them some chords and the melody. They sent back their interpretation of that. And then I worked on my interpretation of that. So this is what they sent back to me. Let the So that was the first time that I heard those additional chords which they put on at the end which turned out to be the main uh, chorus and drop chords from the track. So it was kind of like in between two worlds now, they'd use the first chord sequence I'd used and then they created their own for the rest of the vocal. So from there they also sent over a, a vocal stem, I'm going to play you a little bit of how I changed that, what they sent, into what you hear today. Um, you can hear hints of that melody in there, the piano bit. But I'll just play it from uh, from here. Let's see if it's the right level. So what I did is I, I took the chords, I uh, made that one longer, this third chord here, and the top line piano uh, had some great ideas in it, and I basically made it into this comp version, so every single uh, little run per every two bars uh, had roughly the same rhythm in it. I kind of feel that those types of things are important to not have too much variation in these kind of top lines. But there we are, I mean, we, we have the uh, the verse section here, over the original chords, now we have a uh, chorus chords and the drop chords, and then it was just time then to marry it to the melody. And going back to the first melody and chords I sent them, I actually had this in the meantime, which I didn't send to them, it's just something I worked on a different day, and it's basically it's a pluck version, like a 16th pluck version of uh, the original. So let's, let's just have a quick listen to this. As you can see, that's you're starting to hear now how Awful Love came, the kind of final riff came together, and then it was just a case of marrying uh, this new chorus to that kind of 16th uh, riff idea, and what we end up with is this.
we have our chord ideas, we have our vocal stem, we have our top line, and then we have our main riff. So I'm going to switch now into the uh, full final session. Okay, guys, this is the final session. Um, it's all been nicely color coded and grouped into different tracks. Um, I like to keep things organized. It really uh, helps me mix these big tracks down. So from top to bottom, we've got that's all the vocal tracks. Um, see here, this is the main vocal. Sail tonight, let the storm is break. Why water? I should mention by this point, uh, it's already been passed through my SSL mixer where I do some EQ and compression on it. And um, I've actually uh, done a little bit of tuning, not much, because Sue's pretty much bang on. Uh, there's some timing as well. I do a lot of um, making sure each syllable is marked onto the beat by using these markers. Um, this is Pro Tools version of it. Ableton Live is a very similar thing as do all of them these days. But uh, yeah, that's the vocal sections. Uh, there's some harmonies and backing tracks here as well. Love, love. You might not be able to hear those in the final mix, but this is uh, what it sounds like combined. So there's a few of those that go on in the track. Uh, moving down here is all the uh, synthesizer tracks. This includes piano tracks as well. Um, so what have we got in here? We have, these are some of the intro noises uh, that I talked about in the uh, interview. It's a NASA noise. Just add some like ambience. Uh, some other stuff I've got. Ooh, it's not uh, playing for some reason. I'm not using that one. I'll actually turn that one down. I mustn't be using that. I think I used this in the album mix, but not in the extended mix. Some crackly sounds. Some kind of like windy pad thing. And I got a lot of these sounds from uh, this program called Omnisphere. Um, it's like a synthesizer and a sampler combined. It's a whole range of different sounds, uh, different textures and atmospheres. It's very good, very good for sound designing. Some more ambient sounds here. So that's kind of the main one you hear at the start of All For Love on the album. These plinky tracks is actually, I think, a piano run which uh, are designed. Like a piano with bell type sound. In the background. Um, I really like these uh, piano kind of runs. Filter opens up on those. Move that stuff. Um, go back up to the, keep these in a, in a second, but we also have some uh, basic saw pads. Give you some uh, some depth. It's a piano sounding part. It's another type of saw pad there. Moving on to the uh, the synth. So the lead is five layers. Um, Work very hard to get these two all sit together uh, with the pads. So we're going to list these all together. These five synths.
using uh, use serum a lot. Lucky with a bit of bit pushing. Quite open. Lower. Lower sound. Super soft sound there. Um, and then we have the piano now in its full production form. That comes from Nexus. Very popular rompler and also I use this called Piano Tech. Um, it's good for emulating uh, pianos, real pianos. And then uh, we come on to all these uh, main plucks. So there's five layers again. Five's not really like a rule, it's just I think just in this track it ended up being this way. It's this The sound of this track is kind of like that, that big uplifting subculture sound, um, big arpeggiators. So let's have a listen from here. I think that sound gives the pretty much like the, the bread and butter to it, that's like the main. Something a bit buzzy at the top. Cool. And then we're just gonna have a look at some of these bass sounds. So the bass um Use a variety of things. I actually have a Moog uh, here, little bass synthesizer. It's good for bass and acids and like mono leads. Um, it's good for filling up uh, a lot of the frequencies in the bass sections. I'll have to show you a video on this synthesizer. It's pr pretty cool. Um, got some mid basses here, which fill out the uh, the space in the middle. Sub sound as well. All together, they work quite well. I'm going to put the kick in as well so you can hear. It. Um, so there's a, there's a, that's the kick drum. I saw this tiny little tap on it as well, just to give it a touch more sharpness. All kicks in obviously with the chord changes, so it sounds a bit different. And uh, for these mid basses and so I'm pretty much using uh, stuff I've made myself. Uh, apart from this occasion, that was that's a preset from somewhere I've, I've altered quite heavily. But yeah, a lot of stuff I make myself, or I'll, I'll edit presets quite heavily these days. Uh, the Moog stuff I make it all myself because there just isn't any presets for it. I'll take you on to the drums now. So, uh, I have a clap and a snare laid together. And they've just come from sample packs which I've uh, rendered down time and time again into different formats, uh, you know, and uh, used them in different tunes. They tend to work very well with each other, I find. Um, where does that snare come from? So that's a Dave Parkinson Trans Essential snare. 
and uh, it's got a bit of EQ on that. Um, it was almost pretty much gated as it was, so uh, yeah, not much uh, effects going on there really. Pretty simple stuff. Got some hats here. On it. Just makes it like roll a little bit the tune. Open hi hat. Right simple. I like stuff like this. Um, I think this came from uh, maybe a loop which I've edited on the machine. I have a machine controller and software. Uh, or maybe I used it from Stylus. I'm not sure, I can't remember, but <laughs> Just has that nice texture to the to the mix of the drums and the loop. So all together, all the drums sound like this. With the kick. Down here, I have some uh, effects drums. So it's pretty simple stuff like. Uh, snare roll. This is uh this is actually free plugin I've got which does a nice flange effect. Some crashes. When uh, I'm doing transitions, I like to make renders. Basically, I'll put a load of plugins on uh, a drum bus like this, and then make renders from it. So, for example, let me show you. On here we have flanges, uh, distortion, filters, and uh, all together they make kind of like a nice mushy transition sound when you apply them to the drum loops. Uh, so this is why these drums are muted and I have this track called Mad Drum Echo. So if we listen to this and these drums combined, you should hear what I mean. I think stuff like that really makes like a tune stand out, just the extra attention to detail. So it's uh, the transition isn't just you know a generic snare roll or whatever. Um, you know you can do more with drums and different sounds. So as all the synths filter down as well in this section, uh, the drums are also doing something pretty special too. So let's do it all together. Maybe you can notice all the different elements which are changing. <laughs> Stuff like that helps to prove the, uh, you know, the quality of the record. I think uh, it's just attention to detail things I like to do. So in the extended mix, there was also uh, an acid sound in the intro. Um, it doesn't really feature in the album version because there's not really any space. The album version was just the uh, quite ethereal intro. Does the uh, the main body of the tune, then goes back out to some pads. On the intro, uh, the extended mix, we have this sound. <laughs> That's made with uh, a few of these layers here. I'm just going to load them up. This one in particular is one of my favourites. Uh, it's from Serum again. nice overdriven acid sound. Structure wise I didn't really have any vocal in the intro often I have the verse and the intro parts but as me and Siskin kind of developed the record together and made the vocal all sit as one you know from verse to chorus in one kind of passage I didn't feel like I needed to change any of that so um, 
the album version starts with the uh, spacey intro pads and um, moves into the vocal and the extended mix has uh, these sounds in it. We move into these chord, se chord changes here. So the pad start. Like where we blend together what would have been the album version and this extended mix. So you start to hear some of these intro sounds from the album version blend into those intro beats, piano starts, uh, all the atmospheres and ambient sounds. Uh, just a simple kick roll, just filters down, nice and smooth, all these high hats and things that we filtered down here. Then, Let the coins blow and the vocal. And the lightning strike. And that just sits on top of these atmospheres. And we just have a solid bass note there. Save. Pretty simple stuff. Introduce the first plug, the very first part of the uh, the track which is sent to Siskin is there. Up. It slams home. Uh, yeah, so there we go. That is uh, my little walkthrough of All for Love. Okay, guys, thank you for tuning into this vlog. Before we wrap it up today uh, with a bit of the music video, I just wanna say a big thank you to everybody that supported my album and my single releases recently. Of course, it's not been the easiest time to promote a record. Uh, it's a very strange time for the entertainment industry, you know, with no shows, no live work, and a lot of uncertainty about when that will kick back up, hopefully as soon as it possibly can. So yeah, so thank you for sticking with me. Thank you for supporting my music. Uh, I read all your comments uh, about the music which I'm releasing on social media and uh, it's been amazing, so thank you. And the album is of course available everywhere, as is the merchandise. If any of it takes your fancy, just hit up the link that is in my uh, bio and on all my socials, basically Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Well, thank you very much for tuning in. The next one is going to be about green screening and how I made uh, these live video sets that you've seen recently, where it looks basically like I'm in space, which is uh, not the easiest thing to do when you just have the limitations of your own home. So I'm gonna show you guys how that was created. And uh, yeah, it's gonna be pretty funny because it's not all uh, roses. It doesn't always go to plan. Okay, so as mentioned, wrapping this little vlog up with some uh, footage from the music video for All For Love, which is mainly a lyric video, but it's also got some really cool clips in there as well. We weren't able to obviously go outdoors and uh, film a full music video like we did with Time Machine. Luckily, we got the Time Machine video done before lockdown happened only just as well um, but yeah this is the video for all for love I uh, hope you guys like it and uh, thanks again for tuning in and see you next time <laughs>